Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video. So today we're quickly going to take a look at uh, Macula Linux Lindos edition. This is actually the Lindos 2020 that's now being released in 2021. So it's kind of adopted the name of Lindos 2021. Anyway, uh, there are two additions to this uh, build and I'm going to run through both quickly. So as you can see, this is the desktop. This is the uh, bare bone build. Um, it is VirtualBox compatible. I'm actually inside a VirtualBox, as you can see here. Uh, so this bare bone build is VirtualBox compatible. Okay, you can either run it on a normal system with actual hardware, or you can run it inside a virtual PC. We will supply the VBox um, appliance to import. Uh, if you look on the desktop, you'll see that uh, you you have this really beautiful, almost Windows-like desktop. You've got the grass background, obviously, uh, nice icons. These icons look very Windowsy. You've got the nice conky clock that we've designed. Um, this is a really nice clock, and I'll get into that in a bit. You've got your bottom panel. You've got some uh, indicator icons on the on the bottom right, and you've got some favorite icons on the bottom left. You've got the start menu on the bottom left as well. You've got this big. Um, looks like a square block here on the bottom right and that's actually your workspace switcher as you can see there's currently four workspaces assigned and if you want to switch between workspaces you simply just hold your mouse over that and just sort of roll the wheel so you can quickly quickly switch between workspaces that's really really awesome let's open a terminal and then I'll show you just switch as you can see switching between workspaces never been easier just roll your mouse wheel and you can switch very, very nice. We've also added some accessibility options here with this accessibility plugin. So really, really nice to uh, just quickly, quickly uh, access one of these if need be. The theming in, in Lindos is uh, very nice, really. We, we've slimmed down, you know, with the previous versions of Lindos, we had like a ton of themes. This time we've focused on three main themes only, but they're far more polished. You know, if you uh, look at the default theme, you've got this nice sort of almost like a mix between Windows 7 and Windows 8 kind of kind of look. You know, it's, it's not a Windows 7 look. It's not a Windows 8 look. It's kind of like a mixture between the two. Um, if you open File Manager, this does have a very Windows 7 kind of look to the borders and the buttons, but not the icons. The icons have more of a like a, I don't know, Let's get rid of this thing here. The icons have more of like a Vista look to them. So, you know, it's kind of like a blend of all different themes kind of rolled into one. But it's got a, it's a very modern look. It's very shiny, very nice. Uh, yeah, definitely a definitely well, well made theme. Okay, so out of the box, the default theme that you have when you so, of course, the Windows borders are kind of Windows 7 like Windows borders. Out of the box, when you boot this up, you've got this really stunning, stunning looking theme. Uh, actually, all the themes are stunning, but I mean, just as you see it right there, it's beautiful. And um, so you can expect some nice theming, a pleasant look when you're running it. Uh, you will notice that it does have a very Windows-like look. Obviously, it's Lindos. It's really supposed to target people coming from Windows to Linux. But at the same time, like I said, we've been uh, mixing and matching themes and, and not only just Windows themes. You'll notice a lot of these icons are, have don't even look like Windows. So we have sort of sort of started moving away from the Windows look in some regards. We've kept certain things like categories and folders to look like Windows icons, but the apps we have given sort of a, a different look. So it's a mix and a match, you know. A Lindos is supposed to be attractive to people coming from Windows, but it's also supposed to uh, appeal to people on the Linux side of things. And also you you don't want a clone of Windows, because then you might as well use Windows, you know. You just want enough Windows there to make a person coming from Windows to feel comfortable. And that's what Lindos really is. So if we go take a look at these themes here quickly, 
um, you'll see there that we've got the modern, the classic, and the dark theme. Okay, so we're currently on the modern one. That's the one that you boot up. This is the the modern theme. Uh, if you go to with classic, that will bring you back to like the Windows 3.1, Windows 95 kind of days. Those you know, those old classic. Let me just uh, change the wallpaper here. And let's just go back to that one. I like. I want to keep it standard. There we go. Um, now we have that very old classic look. And again, this is to appeal to the people that might come from that era of Windows that feel comfortable uh, with that that look. So you'll see that's got that very old kind of uh, I don't know Windows 95, Windows 3.1, Windows 98 kind of uh, time frame. You've got the very old buttons, but you've got the sort of a little bit more modern uh, look for that time. So it's kind of a mix between Windows 3.1, Windows 95, and Windows 98. Um, again, everything is fully functional. The theme's very well polished. So if you uh, click on something, you know, you've got the, the check boxes that are nicely laid out. The theme itself is very well done uh, you know all the buttons on highlight nicely everything's just been polished 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 looks nice feels good so even if you run this old team it will still look and feel comfortable and um, like i said we've got three so we've got the modern the classic this is the classic when you change it changes the icons the themes the backgrounds it changes the mouse cursor as well so as you can see that's the old classic mouse cursor and then we've got a dark theme for those guys that want the sort of a dark mode let's activate the dark theme now uh, the dark theme you'll notice that the bottom panel is very dark the menu is almost like a i don't know like a mix between Windows 8 and Windows 10, not really Windows 7 so much. Um, it's got a very sort of transparent, flat look, but you can see the background through the menu. That's nice. It's almost like a Windows 10 kind of feel, but it doesn't have the blue highlights. It's got the gray highlights of, uh, I think it's Windows 8 or Windows Vista. So again, um, we've mixed and matched a couple of themes to get this nice dark look. If you actually open up like the window borders or something, you'll get the Windows 7 border buttons. So these I had to make myself. Um, so again, you've got a mix and match between Windows 7, Windows kind of 10 and slash Windows 8 maybe. But it's a very dark look. It's beautiful, by the way. Very beautiful, stunning. And here you've got a little bit more of the flatter look. This is the more of the Windows 8 kind of look there. Um, so yeah, this is the dark theme with different shades. Here you've got the gray, gray, sort of more black, and then the very dark black on top, and of course the the dark borders that go with it. So there you've got a very nice looking dark theme. If you open up your clock or uh, you know uh, some other menus, you will see there that you've got uh, this very dark, dark look. It's very nice, very pretty. And again, everything just works out of the box. So you've got these three nice themes. You've got the modern theme, you've got the uh, classic theme, and then you've got this dark theme for the people that prefer the dark mode. So again, um, we've narrowed the themes to only three instead of having half a dozen. But uh, they are more polished. They work nicely. And uh, yeah, it's a nice experience. Uh, I mean, it will give the user a, a very nice experience. So um, that's the theming in a nutshell. You can add themes if you want. If you add your own themes, you can just go to system settings here, and you've got an advanced theme manager over there. And there you can add your own borders, icons, control themes, mouse cursors, desktop themes, and so forth. Uh, by default, though, we offer these three, the the modern the classic and the dark look i'm just going to switch back to the uh, modern theme so there we go as you can see the background stayed that time anyway um so uh, out of the box you get some really nice themes with the lindos uh, three nice themes and a dark mode people have been asking me about dark mode so yes you do get that dark mode theme which is nice 
um, the menus, as you saw, you've got two different menus. You've got this uh, menu with the grid icons. This is the main menu. But you also have the classic menu, which then shows the icons as list mode, not grid. Uh, the menu themselves is nice because you have options to add to panel, add to desktop, add to favorites, or uninstall. If you click uninstall, it will then take you to the uninstall option. Okay. Um, if you open up system settings here, you're going to get all the standard stuff. Remember, we do run on Cinnamon 4.8. Let's just go to system info here quickly and check. Um, we've got uh, Cinnamon 4.8.2. That's the framework. Obviously, it's not the standard Cinnamon. We have modified it heavily, but it is based on the Cinnamon 4.8.2 framework, which means that you will get pretty much all the features of that Cinnamon version. Um, so very awesome. Uh, under your system settings, you'll get all the standard stuff. Uh, okay, obviously backgrounds, desktop clock and themes, uh, that's added, that's stuff we control. Themes advanced is the standard Cinnamon uh, theme manager, which lets you just uh, add your third party themes. We've got applets in here, but uh, desolates in here, but the extensions have been disabled completely. You cannot add extensions. They're just uh, more trouble than they're worth, and we don't <laughs> really, you don't need them for Lindos. Uh, other than that, you've got the standard stuff. You also have online accounts, which is nice. You can sign on to Google, Facebook, and so forth. You can manage your online accounts straight from the system settings, which is really nice. You've got the rest of the stuff here, which is all standard panel, workspaces, startup manager, languages, blah, 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 account managers, and so forth. You got um, your hardware, which is your display, disks, tablet, uh, graphics tablet, keyboard, mouse, blah, blah, blah. Um, under display, if we open up display, you've got all of the new features that Cinnamon 4.8.2 offers, which I thought is really nice. So there's a lot of like uh, scaling and so forth, user interface scaling, uh, rotation, mirror displays, so forth, so forth. Very nice. And then at the bottom, you've got your driver manager, uh, firewall, window manager, login manager, software sources, and so forth. Okay, so uh, there's nothing special, I guess, there. There's mostly a lot of standard stuff in your system settings. Um, there's not a lot preloaded in this build because this is the bare bone build, so there's not a lot preloaded. You do have a leaf pad, which is a notepad. You've got your screenshot. Um, you've got your disks. This is all standard stuff. Warpinator is included, which is really nice. Uh, you've got a compression manager, calculator, variety. To, you know, um, it's part of the system. You can't remove it uh, because we use it as uh, for the wallpaper changer. Graphics, you just got an image viewer. Internet, you've got Google Chrome. Office, you've got a calendar. Sound and video, you've got an audio uh, a volume control and a media player. That's it. Um, yeah, there's not a lot pre-installed. This is bare bones, which is nice because it allows you to install all of your own apps, your own graphics apps, your own internet browsers or, or whatever, your own games, your own office tools, your own audio videos. Whatever you want to install, you can install it. Nothing's really pre-installed. Very, very little pre-installed. All the back-end stuff's there, though. all the tools and stuff you, you can use in... in um, uh, administration and preferences. There's quite a lot installed here with, with just back-end stuff. Oh, uh, we also have the Makuna portal on the desktop, which I thought is nice. It's also in the menu. This is nice because it can take you to the website, forums, wiki, live chat, our YouTube channel, Twitter, Facebook. You can report bugs, donate about us. Everything's right here on one interface, which is really nice. And it looks nice. But buttons highlight nice as well. So that little portal is quite nice. We, we didn't have that in the last uh, build. Um, so that's the main menu. It's a nice looking menu, easy to work, easy to manage. But we also have a secondary menu, one you probably haven't noticed or haven't seen yet. If you actually take your mouse and you just push it into the top corner, you get the full screen menu, which is an overlay full screen menu. And a semi-transparent looks nice. And uh, so you can see the background through that. And of course, you can just click on something to you know, obviously some app to open it or whatever. And that's it. That's the top corner. You can also search, like there's constructor, but if I search construct, 
register as you can see just type and then I just hit enter and open it so it's got um, so it's nice little overlay menu full screen menu for the people that prefer school full screen just push your mouse into the top corner very nice very easy to do and uh, yeah you can just access anything from there nice so you got those two uh, those are your two main menus the bottom traditional menu and the guys that prefer the full screen menu in the top corner um, we also have uh, support for, uh, well, if I open up the software center, you'll see it's populated a lot of software in here. Now, apart from the standard repos, we also have, uh, we open up here, let's go down here, you'll see Snapcraft, we support it out of the box. So all of your Snapcraft, it's so easy. Just open up your software center, search something, install it, done. It's so easy. It's never been easier to use Snapcraft. As well as uh, FlatHub, if you open up, Something here you'll see the flat hub. So flat hub and Snapcraft fully incorporated into the into the store. And the store is easy, just open up, choose something, install, read the reviews. You, know, you can come down here. Reviews, okay. Nobody's written a review, but two people have given reviews. You can see the reviews there, see the information about the app, size, download size, blah blah blah. There's an install button. So easy to do. Um, Anyway, it, it will also tell you the source too. As you can see, if I click somewhere, it tells you the source. A lot of the stuff we supply ourselves to. Anyway, so uh, you got this nice store to choose from. Web browser, simple. This is a very, you know, we've, we've actually uncomplicated a lot of it. Uh, uh, previous builds used to be so complicated. This is so simple, really. You've got a bottom panel with a nice menu, some favorite icons. Some nice icons on the other side. A full screen menu in the top corner. You know, if you want to use uh, workspaces, there in the bottom corner on the right hand side, you can just scroll for workspaces. You click your file manager to open. You've got this very simple but nice looking file manager that has everything you need in a file manager. So, Lindos has been simplified so much, you know, that uh, it just works. It just, it's nice, it's comfortable, it's easy to use. Um, if we look at some of the items that we do add, obviously, you know, the theme manager, very easy. Just click the little pictures, the pictures show you little previews, so easy to use the theme manager. Um, desktop background, again, just right click, choose desktop background, and you can either uh, choose a random forward or backward wallpaper. You can configure wallpaper options. You can set the uh, stretch, scale, zoom, none. Or you can select the wallpaper. If you choose select the wallpaper, it will show a little pop up, a little ribbon with wallpapers here. And you can just click on, on any picture and it will just set the wallpaper for you. So very nice. There's some really, really, really nice options here. Some beautiful ones. So yeah, very, very, again, very, any wallpaper that you add yourself to user share background will pop up in that ribbon option. If you go configure wallpaper options, it will just open the variety options and here you can go set all the wallpaper options that you want. You can even set it when to change, auto change, manually change. There's a lot of options there. So desktop background, desktop clock. This is really nice. We designed this little conky. And then we designed a GUI for the conky. So now you can just uh, choose between analog and digital, black and white, 12 and 24, left and right, hourly, daily. So for example, if I want to make, it's a digital clock now, but if I want to change it to analog, I just select analog, as you can see there, changes to analog, very beautiful. You can make the clock black or white. Why did we choose black and white and not blue, green, orange, and so forth? Well, because uh, mainly the reason is that some wallpapers might be light in color. So you've got a very light wallpaper and you've got a white clock. You won't always easily read all the text. If that's the case, you can just change it to a black clock. There you go. Black clock on a very light wallpaper. You can see everything now quite clearly. And again, the other way around, if you then decide later on to change your wallpaper to a dark wallpaper, and of course the black text on the dark wallpaper will be difficult to see, you can just change your clock black to back to white. And then, uh, yeah, you know, everything should work again. Uh, everything should be easy to see again. So, yeah, pretty much black and white work on any wallpaper. It doesn't matter what color the wallpaper is. You know, you're either going to see it with the white clock or the black clock, or you get some wallpapers where you can use either or. I'm just going to switch that back to digital again as well. Um, you've got your 12 and 24 hour clock. 
So as you can see there's some 24 hours now, it says 13.26, I can set it to 12, and then it'll say 1.26 p.m. Now it adds a p.m. over there. Don't worry about this uh, Vietnamese, it's because I'm in Vietnam, it's detected my location, so it's using the Vietnamese language there, don't stress about that. Um, we can set that back to 24 hours. You can set the clock left or right as well. Just have to remember that your desktop icons, you might want to disable those. You can switch those on and off. So, for example, um, turning off, the, you can see there's a home folder. There it's off, there it's on. So, uh, you can turn the desktop icons off and then obviously switch the clock to the left. Now it will show on the left. Or you can just set your icons, go to... Um, Display settings. Uh, where's this uh, lock screen? Uh, customize. Sorry, there we go. Customize, and you can take off auto arrange. Now you can actually move your icons manually to the right hand side of the screen and have your clock on the left, of course, or just leave auto arrange on and uh, turn off the icons then if you want the clock on the other side of the screen there you go but the nice thing is that we supply the option to move the clock left or right and the quotes get updated either hourly or daily it actually tells you there so the hourly but if you change it to daily uh, just give it a few seconds to refresh it will now say daily okay so let's switch that back to hourly then uh, you also have options for weather to set the weather so you can go to weather settings there's a little little thing here on how to do it but you can set celsius fahrenheit you just get a code you enter the code according to your zip code uh, it's not so, so difficult just read the instructions it's not really hard to do it's something you really only do once anyway and uh, yeah you just type get code it will open the website you type you type your location in and then just copy the little code from the website and you enter it here and that's it. Then you set Celsius or Fahrenheit and then the weather will show up there. Um, you've also got additional options here. Now this is nice because uh, we've given you the option to turn off certain parts of this. For example, if you're not going to use the weather, as you can see there's the weather, you can turn the weather off. So you just, that's it. Weather's off. Give a chance to refresh there we go there's no more weather over there if you don't want to see the headlines oh, sorry just got an additional option don't want to see the headlines you just turn the news feeder off that's it no more news headlines now you've just got system information quotes and so if we don't want the quotes just turn them off that's it now you just got system information and the clock if you don't want system information you can turn that off as well of course the clock you can't turn off that stays on but you can turn off everything else if you wish so that's nice or just turn them all on again just with a click of a button so easy so easy very 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 nice little customizable uh, desktop clock so awesome huh right you got all these little options here um, and of course you've got the option to refresh the clock refreshing the clock will also refresh the quote which i thought was nice because sometimes you get these quotes that aren't all that great these are just random quotes pulled off the internet we do not control these quotes so please if you see any quotes you don't like <laughs> we don't control them it gets pulled off a random quote off a website that has tens and tens of thousands all you can do if you see a quote you don't like refresh the clock it will just change the quote it takes like a second and of course if you don't like the quote then you can just if you don't like the quotation system you can always just turn it off so that's a nice little conky clock where we actually made our own GUI for it. Works like a charm. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much Lindo's out of the box. I mean, really, that's it. It's a very simple but usable operating system that feels very comfortable. Um, you know, you, you, like I said, this is the bare bone, bare bone version. So there's very, very little installed here. But it's very comfortable to use, don't you think? beautiful and comfortable it is so beautiful anyway i'm going to switch over now to the uh more complete build so we've got a bare bone build and we have a complete build so i'm going to switch over to complete build and show you the difference differences between bare build bare bone and complete see you in a second okay so here we are in the complete build okay 
So as I mentioned before, the main difference between the bare bone build and the complete build is the complete build comes with a lot of software preloaded out of the box and pre-configured. So that's the main difference between the two. Uh, so if we have a look here, there's not too much extra software to sort of, uh, you know, label it as bloat, but it is pre-configured and it is software that most people will probably use daily. So let's take a have a look. Uh, let's take a look here quickly and um, see what is pre-installed. Well, firstly, you're going to notice Play on Linux is there, or Play on Linux, which tells you that Wine is pre-installed, and you can see that with the Wine tricks over there as well. So definitely, that's something that's not in the bare bone. If we go to graphics, you'll see that my Paint is installed, which is not installed in the bare bone. Um, internet, there's nothing new there, and of course the whole of the Office Suite is there, WPS Office Suite is there, pre-installed, uh, under sound and graphics you've got a simple screen recorder, you've got a sound recorder, and you've got a webcam mode for your, you know, using your webcam, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So it's not a lot of stuff that's pre-installed, but there are some, sorry, I forgot the games tab, coming down to that. This is probably the one of the most important as well. How can I forget that? Um, yeah, we've got Steam and GeForce Now, and I'll get to that in a second. I just want to go back here to WPS Office quickly. Let's just open that. Okay, so there we go. Uh, WPS Office, let's go New Document. And as you can see, it has a very Microsoft Office look. In fact, it's compatible with all the Microsoft Office documents as well. Uh, very easy to use, very simple, very nice, nice layout, nice look. And uh, yeah, that's WPS Office. And you obviously get the writer, um, the, let's go back here again, you get the full Office Suite, which is the writer, the PDF, presentation, and the spreadsheet. So WPS. Um, so yeah, full full Office Suite pre-installed, which is really nice. I want to come down to games quickly. Um, Steam is obviously pre-installed, so just run, update, and, and play. Um, GeForce Now is something I actually want to explain, because I know some guys might know what that is, and others might not. GeForce Now, let's open it quickly. Okay, there we go, GeForce Now, loading. Now, because I'm in Vietnam, it's telling me uh, GeForce Now is currently not supported in your region. I can change the server, though. I can change it so that, because it's looking for Vietnamese server, which is not going to find. There is none in Vietnam, in Vietnam. But I can change to the Taiwanese or the Japanese server. Uh, I currently do play on the Japanese server. Now... Uh, so just ignore this message just because I'm in Vietnam. Um, GeForce Now is basically a allows you to play games on a shadow PC. Uh, basically playing remotely. Meaning you log in, you create a GeForce Now account. It's free. Um, and then you link it with your Steam or your Epic Games account. It will pull all the supported games from Steam into GeForce Now, and it will install them on that remote PC that lies, you know, in the GeForce, uh, in the in the NVIDIA server room. There's a PC with a GPU and a CPU, blah, 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 nice, nice hardware. It will pre-install all the games on that server. And you basically re play remotely. This is an interface that allows you to play your games from that PC as if they were installed on your computer. So you're basically just playing remotely via this window, which is nice because it bypasses the need for a graphics card, it bypasses the need for drivers, it bypasses the need for compatibility with Linux or whichever operating system you're running, in this case Linux. Um, so this is really nice. Now GeForce Now is not supported in every country, but um, you can play with a VPN if it's not. Like if you're in Africa somewhere, there is no African uh, GeForce Now server, but you can maybe play via one of the European servers, just hook up a VPN, and uh, off you go. No no problem. Um, with a VPN, you might suffer some, uh, uh, you know, some latency issues if you're playing multiplayer games, but the single-player games should still play quite well, you know, still play quite fine. 
If you're in Europe or America, no, in, no problems. There are servers throughout Europe and America. Russia has a server. There are a couple in Asia as well. I'm, I'm not sure about... I think there's one in New Zealand. I'm not sure. There must, there must be Australia as well. So GeForce Now is mostly available all across the, 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 the world for most people. So for most people, this is not an issue. And it's a really, really nice experience to play. Uh, I tell you, I, I play almost daily, so I, 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 it's it's been a very it's been a very good experience for me. So I think most people will like the fact that we pre-installed this. Um, so yeah, so you can game quite easily in Lindos. And now I want to go check out the wine. I did download an exe file here, so let's go try and set it up. Here we go. Win. Uh, SEP. So this is the actual setup. So I'm going to run the setup. And there you can see as I double click it. I just double click as I would normal AEXE. It's creating the wine bottle for us now. So uh, this will just take a second. So I just double click the EXE as if I was in Windows. There was nothing special I had to do. Simply double click. It's already pre configured. Um, this should now run up the set, run the setup program. I'm just going to close this here. There we go. Set, please. Okay, yes, install. Uh, let's go through the setup here. Yes, typical commander install. There we go. It's installing the application via Wine. And done. No, don't launch. There we go. Finished. And as you can see, it created a shortcut there. It should also create a shortcut in the menu. There we go, under Wine, there it is. Okay, Win SCP. So let's double click that and run the application. And let's see if it opens up the way it's supposed to. And it's supposed to pop up like a GUI and then within a few seconds later, uh, like a login little panel. There's the GUI. Give it a few seconds. There we go, there's the login panel. I'm not going to log in now. But yeah, uh, it works really nice. Okay. So you've got Wine pre-installed, just double click and it works. You can run EXE files. If they're supported by Wine, they'll run, which most are. Um, you can game quite easily, either the game on Steam if you have the hardware for it. And if you don't have the hardware for it, or if you don't have any gaming hardware, hell, gaming GeForce Now. You, with GeForce Now, is so awesome that you can have an old GPU, like one of those old Intel HD 3000 or HD, or whatever, uh, graphics cards, which basically struggles to play card games, and you could play, like, the new Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, or that new um, Cyberpunk 2077, on high settings, without needing the hardware, because you are playing remotely. The, the hardware that's being used is not your hardware. It's the hardware on the, on the remote box. That box is... Uh, you know, carrying all the weight of, of the system requirements. You, you just, GeForce Now is just a GUI that allows you to play, connect to that box and play. So it's really nice. So the guys that want a game but don't have the hardware to game, this is going to be really nice for you. You guys are going to really appreciate this. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. The complete build is just some nice, a nice little selection of apps that don't bloat the system, but give you some options like you know out of the box for example out of the box if you want to run it uh, you know like a little paint editor my paint is probably about the best you'll get um you want obviously to have office and pdf access out of the box that's there you obviously want to be able to screen record or, or record your voice or use your webcam that's there um you know you want to play a couple of games that's there you want to game seriously that's there too uh and of course you have wine. You can run your Windows apps out of the box and play on Linux. Is of course a nice little GUI as well for for Windows apps and games. So, yeah, um, out of the box, not too much bloat yet. It still gives you that nice and complete feel, which is why we named it uh, uh, Lindos Complete the Complete Build. So that's pretty much Lindos in a nutshell. You know, uh, we've simplified Lindos a lot, as you I'm sure you've seen in this video. We have simplified. It used to be very complex. It's so simple now. But the one thing we didn't lose focus of was to make it feel easy and comfortable. Those are the two words that I really want to stress with Lindos. That's it. 
it's easy and comfortable to use. Uh, beautiful, sure, but easy and comfortable to use. So that's it, guys. That's my video for today. I uh, just wanted to show you the difference between the bare bone build and the complete build. The bare bone is uh, basically stripped down, it's got no software, almost no software. The complete build comes with some more software pre-configured out of the box. Not a lot more, but the ones that do matter. Gaming, uh, wine, office, uh, you know, some uh, photo and video editing tools and stuff. Um, so it does come with a more complete uh, out of the box experience anyway that's it guys uh, thank you for watching the video uh, stay safe and keep well and remember that um, if you want to donate to the project you are welcome to we sure could use the cash flow anyway uh, uh, that's it keep well stay safe and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video